Hi, I'm Trisha Morris at Club Scrap, and the purpose of this video is to show you how to make a beautiful double page spread from just four sheets of paper and a little bit of time using our clever page formulas. These formulas are all about using your stash, so I challenge you to make this layout along with me, perhaps after just watching the video one time through. I'll give you lots of tips and tricks along the way. To help me get started, I have my Fiskars guillotine style trimmer. I consider this to be my best friend and my workhorse, and they're very economical, and I do carry them here at Club Scrap if you happen to need one. I'm going to start out with this wine colored paper here. This has a beautiful linen like texture and most club scrap papers are usually an 80 pound cover weight. Now I'm going to lift the blade here and the blade on this trimmer does lock at this notch on the lower right corner. So keep that in mind. I'm going to slide the paper underneath the clear bar on the trimmer base. It's a unique feature to this tool. And I'm gonna find the number 11, or 11 inches. Be mindful that the top row of numbers here are centimeters, so that would put me at 11 centimeters. We wanna be at 11 inches. When you find that whole number, just make sure that the paper is flush with the top edge of this guide right here. Before you slice, push down firmly on this clear bar, and then just bring the blade down. That's all there is to it. Then I'm gonna slide the paper down to eight. Now, I'm not gonna move anything. This little piece of paper that landed here, just keep it right where it landed. I'll slide over to eight inches. And now I'm going to rotate this eight by 12. Notice again, I left that paper lay where it landed. Next, I'll cut at four inches. So I'm gonna slide way down over here and stabilize on the clear bar. There we go. Next, I'm gonna rotate again and trim at two inches. <laughs> and rotate again and trim at two inches. Every time I'm just still stabilizing on the clear bar. So I've made these two little squares. Before moving on, I'm going to introduce you to another friend of mine. This is the accordion pocket file, and it helps us stay organized when we create typically eight 12 by 12 pages at a time using our monthly page kits. This time we're just making one page. I'm gonna utilize the first pocket in this pocket file for all the pieces that are placed on the left side of our layout. And then I'm gonna use the second pocket for all the pieces on the right side. See this little lip right here? It fits right underneath my trimmer base and then it holds those pockets up right in front of me. So these two squares that we made, they're gonna go in the first pocket to be used on the left side of the page. If you don't have the accordion pocket file, just put them on one pile to your left. Now we have this other larger rectangle. This one's used on the right side, so I'll put that in the second pocket. We have this large square. We're going left with that, so pocket one. And now we have a little bit more trimming to do. Here's the, the next strip that was laying here to my right. I'm gonna place it in the trimmer horizontally and trim at nine, stabilize, six, stabilize, and three. All four of these squares are used on the right side. So pocket two, and this also is used on the right side, so I'll place it in the second pocket as well. Notice at this point there are no scraps and we're finished trimming the first sheet of paper. Now I'll bring in this beautiful print. This is from Club Scraps Magnolia Collection in case you're wondering. And my first cut now is at 11 and a half. When we trim on the halves, I just want to point out that there's a vertical column on this trimmer that marks every quarter inch. So when you find 11 and a half, a lot of students accidentally go to the right, <laughs> but you have to go to the left of the number 11 to grow the number. So that's 11, 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half. Stabilize on that clear bar and slice. We'll leave that piece there and slide the paper down to 10 and a quarter. So you'll find 10, go left to find 10 and a quarter. Stabilize again and trim. I want to point one other thing that a lot of students do the first time using the trimmer is they keep their hand up on the blade, holding the blade up, and they only move the paper with their left hand. Well, the good news is the blade stays up on its own. I suggest letting the blade go between cuts, and now we're gonna slide to six inches. And you use both hands to guide the paper along that top ridge. So there's your six inches. And I promise that will make you a lot more efficient. Now rotate the six inch paper. Let's cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, 
and three and three quarters. Again, do you see both hands guiding the paper around the trimmer? It works really well. Take the three rectangles, left side, so the first pocket or pile. Then you have this little piece, the right side or the second pocket. This next strip, we'll trim it at six and a quarter. So again, you find six, go left one column. Notice again, two hands to move the paper, push down, you're good to go. Right side, so second pocket, left side, right side, left side. So again, wait a minute, there are no scraps. Yay! <laughs> so now I'm done with my trimmer. I'll set that aside. And it's no longer supporting my accordion pocket file to hold it vertical, so I'm just gonna lay it on its back and bring in the remaining two pieces that I have selected for my page. Lay them side by side in front of you. Everything in this pocket now, or pile, goes on the left side of my layout, and everything in the right pocket goes on the right side. Make sure you get everything out of there. Oh, I missed something. <laughs> that little square. Very good. Now I follow the map. So here's my little map of my page formula. So let's pick everything up here. I like to deal, deal the pieces out from my hand, sort of like I would if I was playing some cards, right? And I'm gonna place my big square up here in the left corner with a little bit of margin around there. Next, I'll take this little half inch strip here. We're gonna use that as sort of an anchoring device. Right? And you'll have a series of narrow mats in that print that I can run down the page here in sort of like a, a film strip manner. This will be vertically placed right about here and our two little squares fit right down there. Lovely, I'm all ready to add pictures to this. Now I'll follow the map again and take the, all of the things that I'd set aside for this page. This time we'll begin with our printed paper kind of going across here to anchor the bottom of the page and it nests with another buddy in that wine color. And I should have a series of four squares I can place sort of in a grid pattern, two rows and two columns. And then you have a print that should match the height from here to here, right? And it nests with this. And our little print that's here can go there or can go plain side up as well if we wanted to. Now that I have everything arranged on my page, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to use adhesive to glue down all of the pieces. This is my little friend, the ATG gun, adhesive tape gun or adhesive transfer gun. And I'm going to run some tape just along some of the obvious things that need to be nested here. So I can attach my little, I chose to do it plain side up so I can use that for a little caption for my page. Then I'll add some adhesive to the strip and nest it. Here's another spot. I can go ahead and nest this piece right here. Now I've got the easy stuff done. Now let's just say I wanted to attach this piece randomly, two and a quarter inches up from the bottom edge of this layout, and I want it to be level. I have this little problem with gluing things down onto my pages downhill, maybe not that obvious, but I have a downhill problem. So on this ruler, every cube on the ruler represents an eighth of an inch. And these bold solid lines right here, that's one inch, because it's eight cubes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight more cubes gives me two inches, and then two and a quarter takes me to the next solid line. That's kind of the ruler basics here. So I'm gonna place my ruler down. So I'm two and a quarter inches up from the bottom edge of the paper. Now maybe when you were first taught to measure a, for a straight line, you would go two and a quarter, two and a quarter, two and a quarter, connect the lines. But using this handy ruler helps me just eliminate that. I know right now that I'm at two and a quarter inches from the edge. Sort of a lengthy explanation, but that's okay. Now I will add adhesive to this and make sure my ruler is level. This has the adhesive. I'll rest this along the edge of the ruler and drop it down. And now I know that it's not running downhill. I love that. <laughs> Next, I'm gonna use my ruler kind of in a different way to, well, similar way, I guess, to make sure that these pieces are placed kind of nice and evenly along 
the edge of my layout so everything can be beautifully aligned. So I can probably go ahead and just add adhesive to, I'll start with these two pieces. I'll use my ruler so I can have it maybe a quarter of an inch, so it's two cubes <laughs> from the edge of the page, and I'll separate these pieces by two cubes as well. So for these next two, I simply will do a visual alignment to keep them level, or you could turn the ruler this way. It doesn't matter what number you're on, just as long as it's two cubes away. And now I know that these are level. And this I'm just gonna eyeball. Okay, then I'll take this last piece, keep my ruler up at the top, resting against the existing pieces, and I can attach this at the same distance apart as well. And now I have a beautiful layout ready to go. A couple more tips for this other side. Let's begin by attaching the large square. That's pretty easy. So I'll just put some adhesive in each corner. And I want to attach this a half an inch from the edge of the page. So I will find a half of an inch from the edge and it doesn't really matter what number you're on. I'm just choosing a whole number here. So four cubes down from the top edge, four cubes in from the right edge, and I'll drop my paper, and now I know it's perfectly square, equally distanced from here and here to the piece. Now I have this little guy. Since my tape is the same width as the piece, I'm gonna to resort to using a different glue product. This is our bookbinding glue placed into a needle-tipped applicator. I use this all the time. So I'm just gonna run the glue along the piece here in a squiggle. And I wanna place it three inches from the top edge and I want to make sure that I'm not placing it up or downhill. And my ruler just happens to be three inches wide. Can you tell how much I love my ruler? So I'm just gonna rest it along the top edge of my layout here and place the paper down along the edge of the ruler. And now I know that my little border strip here is level. How cool is that? Next up, we've got these three film strip type pieces to attach. So I'm gonna rotate my layout a little bit so that my ruler is on this edge, which is where they're gonna be. All these pieces are gonna be running along here. So in addition to just being able to measure and do all the leveling that I've shown you, the ruler does have a zero center. And so I'm gonna place the ruler so that it reads zero here, six here, and six there. Perfect. Now I wanna be a cube and a half from the edge. So I'm gonna scoot a little bit this way. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'm one and a half cubes from the edge. And then I'm gonna take this piece and try to make sure the measurement on each side matches. So I am one cube away from the two over here and one cube away from the two over here. All right, that's what I'm gonna shoot for. I'll add adhesive to this piece. Double check that my ruler hasn't moved, which it did. <laughs> and I'm finding that one cube before the two. That actually is one and seven eighths. And now I can place my paper in that spot. I will then add my adhesive to the neighbor. And I'm gonna separate this, this piece from the one I've attached by a cube and a half on each side. One and a half cubes there, one and a half there. I'll add my other piece. One and a half cubes I'm looking for. Beautiful. So now I know that all three of these pieces are perfectly level. I have just three more pieces left to attach. So this is gonna be placed right in here and I'll just visually, I've got a pretty good framework here to work with. And my two tiny squares. And you might be thinking, why would I adhere my paper before I even know what pictures I'm gonna be using? And that's the secret. That is like the best thing you could possibly do because now your layout is ready the bulk of the work is done, and all that's left to do is grab some pictures and add them to the layouts. To review then, this is the Magnolia version of this fun page formula requiring only four pieces of paper. It's a beautiful layout. You can still use more of the space here if you want to even add more pictures, but you have a lot of possibilities. And you can repeat this formula with anything you already have or with papers you get from Club Scrap. Let me show you a few, a few more examples. Here is a layout that I did 
with a collection called Whimsy where the papers are actually two-sided. So you see this paper on this side of the page is green and on this side it's blue. Pretty fun to put this together. And you can see I followed the same protocols, the four squares, the, the anchoring strips, the film strip style here. And I even added an extra picture over on this side. And these are pictures of La Jolla, California. So the theme is whimsy, but I thought the vibrant colors really set off like the greens and these flowers here. And that was what was all about with my finished photos on this one. I started this page with everything stuck down as we did here. And I just simply brought my photos to the layout. Here's another example with our Flourish collection. I used the print, a craft plane, two greens, and these photos are from a trip along the Rhine River Gorge. Again, nothing to do with Flourish, but boy, it sure worked with these beautiful colors. Now while we're here, I want to share a quick ruler tip. We have a square ruler and I use this when I'm finishing my pages. So what I do is I hover my ruler over whatever the mat is and I get a reading on it. So three by three. Then I can take my ruler over to my uncropped photo and measure. If I trim this down to say two and three quarter by two and three quarter, is that gonna, am I gonna lose something important? The answer is no. Okay, then I can trim to that size. And that's pretty much how I handled all of these pictures. I measured the size of the mat, subtracted a quarter of an inch from each measurement, trimmed my photo and glued it on, and my page was done in no time. I even did the same thing here with these smaller photos as well. I just measured the mat, subtracted, and trimmed. I've got another layout for you. This is done with our fun and games kit, believe it or not. And this is a picture from my daughter's graduation. Why? Because the colors of her school the Wisconsin Badgers are red and white, and wow, did it go, I mean, this is spectacular, right? Just really, it's the color makes it pop. Don't worry so much about the theme. I say that all the time. And I want you to see right here that I just added three pictures of her climbing the statue and anchored them onto that strip. So a nice different way of using that, that little extra strip and then added my notes to the, um, and the caption right here on the paper base. Here's another example pictures with our legacy collection taken in Balboa Park, California. Beautiful architecture and a gorgeous uh, base on which to place it. We also have a kit called Mariachi. And so what you're seeing here are the same layouts over and over again, but used with different themes, different photos, the exact same placement even. And if, the, if you were paging through a book and you would see all these side by side, you would probably wouldn't even notice they're the same layout. Take note here that I had two vertical photos. I just trimmed them narrow enough to fit within the space and used my grid ruler to determine the size they needed to be. Very, very helpful tip. This I used for my journaling here. And finally, our Mediterranean kit. Again, a beautiful collection. I'm not sure what snowmobiling has to do with the Mediterranean, but I did see the gorgeous blues in these photos standing out in such a stunning way um, with this collection. I hope this little workshop gives you a good idea of how awesome these page formulas work. And I just want to tell you that being a Club Scrap Page Kit member means that you not only get this page formula every month for you to do with as you wish, the entire collection we send you has been assembled and prepared for you in such a way that all you need to do is follow my trimming instructions along the, the video workshop and printed instructions and you will be able to make eight individual layouts that are fully embellished and ready to go every single month with very, very little waste at the end. I don't want you to spend all your time storing and organizing the things you don't use. I want you to have fun with your hobby. If you haven't already, I encourage you to give our Club Scrap Page Kit membership a try. Your satisfaction is guaranteed. There's no minimum time requirement. It's my job to earn your loyalty. Don't forget to hit subscribe on that YouTube channel so you don't miss any more fun workshops and tips from us at Club Scrap. Thanks for joining me.